All right, hi everybody, uh, Ryan here. Uh, made it up to North Canton, Ohio, not too far from home. Uh, kind of wishing I didn't do this load. Uh, it seems like it's always these short ones when you're only like 200 miles from home and probably should have just drove home yesterday and cut my losses and all that and been home a day early because this is just taking forever out here to get, took a couple hours to get loaded yesterday down at PNG down there by Vandalia. Then I got up here North, I actually, it didn't make sense when I mean I'm like 30 minutes from my house uh, but it didn't make sense to go up and drop my trailer in Twinsburg and drive home then drive back up and get it then drive back down to Canton um, so I ended up staying down at the TA there in uh, Canton last night you know I hate staying 30 minutes from my house um, when I had time but it just didn't make sense to do all that 100 miles of running around and I um, didn't want to bother my wife at 8 o'clock at night to come down and get me and all that so um, so that's already frustrating with that and um, I get down here and I've been down here since uh, uh, since 9.15 and we're going on 11.30 now. Um, I've had a, a red light with nobody in the back of the trailer here at this uh, Sam's Club, uh, Kane Logistics or whatever down here at North Canton. Um, anyways, I've had a red light for 40 minutes now and not a single forklift has been in the trailer. So. Um, so whether, other than stew about this whole thing, I figured I'd do a quick video here. I mean, probably as soon as I start doing this, they're probably going to start rocking my trailer and knock my phone and camera over and all that here pretty soon. But uh, uh, there's a video, a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a while, a couple months I've been thinking about this. And uh, there's five, six things. I'm going to say five and I'm going to throw a six on in, but I'm not going to talk too much about it because I don't know a whole lot about it or have, haven't looked into it in depth. Um, so I'm going to say five things that qualifications, uh, endorsements, or whatever, uh, whatever you want to call them, that you can get out here that will make you more, uh, more flexible um, and more profitable as an owner-operator pretty much anywhere, not just at Landstar. Um, I know even at Mercer, um, any place these things can uh, help you out and help you make more money and, and can help you out of a jam um, if you're having trouble sometimes when you might have a load cancel or um, if you're looking for a load, then um, these, these things have really helped me out because it seems like um, when I've had a load can I don't it doesn't happen very often with me with loads canceling here at Landstar, um, but it seems like the times that they have, the few times it has, um, due to these qualifications and things that I have, I've been able to find a load in an area that there wasn't anybody else qualified to take, so I was able to come in and snap it up pretty quick. Uh, so, um, got these three things in my hand here, um, and we'll talk about each of them. And uh, part of the CDL was uh, two things. Uh, so, the first thing I wanna talk about is obviously your, your CDL. Um, everybody, I mean, obviously, if you're out here, you got a, a base uh, Class A CDL, um, and I know now too. I guess the newer CDLs now they off they have a, a automatic or manual restriction or whatever. So I don't know too much about that. That was when I got my CDL back in 2011. That wasn't a wasn't a thing then. So um, I don't know a whole lot about that. So um, that's one thing. Um, but I guess most of the trucks these days are going to, to automatic or automatics anyways. But I I'm not interested in that. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore because uh, that's not part of this but um so there's several endorsements you can get on your cdl uh you can get your doubles triples um you get your tanker endorsement and your hazmat endorsement um, then there's the bus and, and all that stuff but the the three that i have um i have the doubles and triples because i worked at uh at yrc as a line haul road over the road driver for them um and pulled doubles for them pretty much 90 percent of the time i pulled doubles over there um, pretty much from St. Louis and I guess I got out to Kansas City was the furthest I got working out of the Akron terminal and up in New York, all, all the boroughs in New York City, I've been all the terminals up there, Bronx, Brooklyn, um, and all that stuff, or Mount Vernon they call it uh, down there, but uh, so I've been all over with those. Um, so it's good at Landstar, it's good to get your doubles, your doubles and you don't need Doubles and triples, it's the same endorsement, but you won't pull triples, most likely. It'd be very unlikely. There's only a few places in the country, like up on the Ohio Turnpike and the um, Indiana Turnpike, you can pull triples up there. Um, but I believe they have, there's a, a, uh, a state, another certification that had to actually pull the tree, you have to be trained and all that to pull the triples uh, through the company that you're working for. Uh, so anyways, doubles, uh, there's a lot of opportunities here at Landstar uh, where you can pull uh, FedEx doubles and um, doubles for, for other companies as well. I've seen FedEx a lot. 
and there's been some really lucrative loads like round trip deals. There's one out of Washington, Pennsylvania that you run, you basically go down there and you start out like on a Monday and you finish up on a Friday just running back and forth down there um, from their terminals. And I think the gross on it for a week was like 6,500 or something. And I've called about it. And I know from my experience at, a, at YRC, um, whenever we was use, running a tandem axle truck, a tandem axle day cab, they had a sliding fifth wheel and you gotta have, you gotta slide your fifth wheel all the way to the back to pull a set of doubles or you'll tear the jack. The jacks are closer to the nose of the trailer, to the fifth wheel. So if you don't have a sliding fifth wheel on your truck, um, you're not going to be able to do those loads. So that's my, I don't have a, I got a fixed fifth wheel. I thought about upgrading, but I, I'm, I'm on the fence if I want to invest that money into it or not. Um, but there are those opportunities. Uh, so I, I highly recommend um, if you've got a sliding fifth wheel, um, uh, the, the doubles, uh, the endorsement, it's just a, it's just a written test. There's no road test or anything. And it's not, it's only like a 20 question test here in Ohio. And it's actually, it's pretty easy for the most part. I mean, you can get the CDL manual and, and read it, you know, the night before or something. And, and um, study it and it's, it's pretty pretty common sense stuff so it's not that hard to get that and that can open up a lot of opportunities for you for those types of loads so uh, that's the first thing doubles and triples uh, second thing is a uh, tanker endorsement um, tanker endorsement same thing it's uh, it's just a test there's no road test or anything like that so with the state I know in Ohio you just go and take the test I think it's only a 15 or 20 question test here in Ohio and it's not very it's a lot of common sense stuff as well it's not very hard uh, so that's another one and the reason I bring up obviously you're probably not going to be pulling like a big tanker trailer but the thing is um, some of these loads we haul in the dry vans um, with the big uh, the big uh, chemical totes you have to have a tanker endorsement for those so um, even though they're in a van so I, there's been a lot of times I've done a lot of hazmat tanker loads and um, that's kind of where I'm going with this now um, your hazmat endorsements the other thing so when you have tanker and hazmat you get the x endorsement on your cdl and um, that allows you to, to haul tanker tanker hazmat type of stuff so i do a lot of uh, chemical tote loads um, i just had one out of louisiana that i brought up to richmond indiana there so and um, there's been several times where i've kind of been in the gym and um, i've called the agent and they didn't have it they didn't have tanker endorsement listed on the uh, on the load board on the, li the load listing but then I'll call them like, oh, do you got your tanker notes? I'm like, yeah, I've got it. And, um, and a lot of these loads, they, they can't, people don't have that endorsement. So they don't, uh, they have, sometimes they have a hard f time finding somebody to get the loads with the endorsement. So you can kind of swoop in and grab those loads up. So kind of going right in after that is your hazmat endorsement. Um, it's kind of different from state to state as far as, I mean, obviously you got to go through the, uh, the TSA, the background check or whatever where you go in and get your fingerprints and um, you can you can look it up you can just google hazmat endorsement um, when you go in for that i know in ohio you have to go do that first you have to go get fingerprinted and uh, they do the background check and all that it's like 8650 and i'm going to put an asterisk by that uh, that price it's something next thing i'm going to talk about after this um, so first time it's 8650 to get your hazmat uh, it's you know if you've had a, a colorful criminal past I mean there might be some issues um, but if you're pretty clean you shouldn't have any issues getting that so you'll have to go I know in Ohio you'll go in you'll you'll make an appointment at one of those sites uh, you have to go in and pay and you have to have two forms of ID when you go in you got to have a birth certificate and your CDL you have to have the CDL first um, so you have to have your birth certificate and a CDL, or you can have your uh, your passport and a CDL, um, something along those lines. Uh, to, to like I said, you have to have two two forms of ID. I, there was one time I was in there. There was a guy. Uh, the first time I got my husband, there was a guy in there. He's like he came in there with his CDL, and he had like his uh, uh, what you call it. Um, it's concealed carry permit and he was throwing a big fit about it and it says right on the paperwork what to bring a concealed carry permit is not you know acceptable for mobile id so um so like i said when you go in make sure you have what they what they're asking for and all that and and um so and i know in ohio once uh i've always typically got mine back really quick you can call like a week after you 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 uh you do your uh your back your fingerprints and all that what i was just talking about um, you can call your license branch and give them your, your uh, you don't have to, they'll say wait 30 days for a letter from TSA. I don't think I've ever even, I don't think I've ever gotten a letter from them. Um, I've always just called down to my uh, local license branch, gave them my license CDL number, 
and they can look it up and they can see in the system if it's already came back. It usually don't take 30 days. You can usually call like in a week and I know from my experience they've been back, but it might not be um, the same with everybody else. So um, after you get that, you can go in, you can take the test. The test is a little, I mean, if you're not, um, if you don't know a lot about hazmat, I'd study pretty well because um, the first time it can be pretty tricky. But like for me, you know, working with about 50% of the loads I do are hazmat. Uh, so it just kind of comes first nature to me, you know, with, with dealing with the stuff and knowing what to look for on the bills and all that. So it's, uh, I, usually, I usually just go in and take the test and, and I'm good to go. So, but once you take the test and you pass, and then, um, then they'll go ahead and add the endorsement uh, to your license. But like I said, when, you, when you're adding these endorsements to your license, they're going to charge, I know in Ohio, they're going to charge you to add to each endorsement and reissue your license. So you're better off, if you're going to add like doubles and triples, tanker and the hazmat, do it all at the same time on one license. And that way you'll save from having to reissue your license three times. So it's better to try to do it all at once if you can. Um, so that's, uh, so whenever doubles, triples, uh, tanker, and uh, hazmat. So the next thing I want to talk about is the uh, TWIC card. So TWIC card is uh, your Transportation Workers Identification Card, I believe is the uh, acronym. Uh, those are they're good for five years. Uh, they're $125. You go to the same 125 and some change. You go to the same sites uh, as you would to get your hazmat endorsement. Now here's what I was talking about with that asterisk a minute ago on that price. So if you have a hazmat it goes down from 125 to 100 $105. You get $20 off. Now, if you have your TWIC card and you're getting your hazmat, um, you go from 86.50, I think, to 67 dollars. So you get about a 20 dollar discount if you have one or the other. And it, you can, it doesn't matter, vice versa. Either way, you get the discount. Either way you go, if you already have one or the other. So TWIC card, that chemical place that I picked up down, uh, that I delivered in, that load I had out of Portland that I took down to Louisiana. If you guys have been watching. Um, they actually had their own port for ships at this chemical plant. So it is a secured area by the Coast Guard and all that. Um, you can get in there without a TWIC card, but then you got to have an escort and you might have to wait and all that. But I have a TWIC card so I can drive around in there by myself. They just tell me where to go and you, you drive around. You don't have to have an escort by security or anything. Um, but there are places where you do have to have a TWIC card or you will not get in. A lot of the oil refineries, um, the ports, I've picked up loads out of the port of Long Beach and stuff like that. Um, so you do, even without an escort, like I said, the refineries, a lot of those, they will not let you in um, to get loads. So uh, it, it's a good thing to have. It's uh, easy. If you've already got your hazmat, it's easy to get. Um, so I, I would highly recommend getting these. are pretty cheap things, I mean, relatively speaking. I mean, um, so I mean, if you pay 86 50 for your uh, hazmat, and then you get the TWIC card for 105. I mean, you're under 200 bucks for these two things that last several years. I mean, and one load uh, can more, you know, one of these loads that might bail you out of a bad situation can more than make up for the cost of getting the stuff. So I highly recommend um, getting everything you can. Uh, so like I said, uh, it, like I said, uh, refineries, ports, uh, chemical places, and pretty much any other place that might have um, it, you might not think it, it, they might be on the coast or something. It might be a chemical, like I said, chemical plant, but if they have a place where ships can come in and offload, um, it's going to be, like I said, you might be able to get an escort if you don't have a TWIC card. Um, but in a lot of cases you have to have it to get on site. So now the other thing with the TWIC card here, uh, that I didn't, there's a second part to the TWIC card. If I can find it here and I'll show you, sorry. I wasn't prepared. I thought I had this ready. Uh, when you get your TWIC card, you're going to get this other little card with it too. And I'm kind of holding the numbers on mine because they might be important. Um, so some of these places, as you can see, see those little fingers? They got this little deal which you put your index fingers on. And then you'll have to put in this pin that's on here. So when you get it, Keep these two, keep your, uh, keep your TWIC card and keep your little uh, pen card together because some places you'll have to put this pen in. And if you don't have this pen with you, you're going to have to go to a TSA office somewhere um, and get a new pen. So uh, make sure you'll get this in the mail with the TWIC card. Um, hold on to that. Keep them together. Keep it in your wallet. Keep it with you. 
um, because like I said, you, like if you got a load in the afternoon or something and you, you don't want to have to be running all over with a tractor trailer um, trying to trying to figure that situation out, so hold on to that. Um, so that pretty much covers the Twix. So the fifth thing I'm gonna talk about is the Passport. And that's this guy right here. And uh, when I always get my, my wife's from China, we do a lot of international travel up until as of lately. Like I said, we had plans to go to Peru and all that for vacation last year and um, decided to cancel that because I didn't want to fly on an airplane like a prisoner and, and all that nasty stuff. So we decided to hold off on that till later. Um, but uh, Passport, uh, get you into Canada. Um, there's been a lot of times where even when this all this COVID nonsense started, I was up in Washington, up in Spokane back in late March, early April, I believe. That's when I did that video where I went all the way across uh, British, started over in British Columbia and went all the way over down into uh, Minneapolis there. I had a load of mulch that they packed in the trailer with the skid loader up there, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Then we went all the way up over the Trans-Canadian. But, uh, uh, when this all went down up there, like I, there was no loads like within a 500 mile radius of Spokane. So and I had a really good load up there. So like I even got went into the agent directory on Landstar, and I like I just started cold calling agents. And some of these agents like I haven't posted a load in three weeks. And and um, about 200 miles north of where I was at, I was able to find this Canadian agent that had these loads of mulch going down. He had some going down in the Colorado, to, down by Denver area, and he had this one going over to Minneapolis. Um, and I was kind of, there was nothing available. I mean, I was looking at deadheading from Spokane, Washington, all the way down in to Northern or Central California to get a load. So luckily I found this guy, it was like a 200 mile deadhead up there, but uh, it was a halfway decent paying load. I mean, uh, I mean, not nothing to brag about, but, but it got me back over. And like I said, if I didn't, if I didn't have this, then, um, I wouldn't have wouldn't been able to get that load. Um, so and I do a lot of loads. I, I haven't in a while, but for back earlier in the year, I, I did quite a few. I did a couple loads up in the Canada. I mean, typically you're not going to get, as an American driver, you can't pick up a load in Canada and terminate in Canada or deliver in Canada. Now you can go in and grab a load and bring it back to the U.S., or you can take a load from the U.S. in the Canada. And it's the same. It's vice versa for the Canadian drivers. You can't. Um, you can't come into the U.S. and take a load from U.S. to U.S. Um, so you can do from U.S. to Canada or Canada to U.S. So, um, but these aren't too expensive. I think the, my renewal on this was around $100 or something. So with all the, the shipping and all that, so not too expensive. Same deal, uh, you have to send your birth certificate or an old passport or whatever in, or naturalization forms if you um, weren't born here or whatever. Um, so I always, there's a box you can check and you can see mine, you can get the actual passport. There's two options where you can get the, the thin one or the thick one. There's no price difference. Uh, I can't remember the exact terminology, um, but I always get the, the thicker book that has the extra page. This one has like 20 more pages than the, the normal one and it doesn't cost you any more. So you might as well get the, the thicker one. So um, this is done, passports are done through the post office. So you could, uh, well, Department of State, um, but they do the the they take your application and all that at the post office. You can get the forms and all that. And then you have to get your pictures. Some of the post offices take pictures, or you can go to like CVS or uh, those type of places. Walgreens they do the passport photos there um, for you to take in. So um, yeah, not not too big of a deal to get a passport. Uh, like I said, if you're wanting to go to Canada, you got to get that. And then. Um, said so it's good for if you want to take a vacation too so now you do have to have even if you want to go to mexico you got to have a passport now back when i was early when i was in the navy um you know back in early 05 06 07 you used to be able i was stationed in coronado san diego where you used to be able to just walk across the border and walk back and it wasn't no big deal with just your driver's license or military id um, but now you have to have a passport to go down there so if you're ever down in Southern California, and like I said, you're down there for a couple of days and you want to go to Mexico and check it out, then like I said, uh, that's another reason to have your passport as well. So um, so that's pretty, the only last thing I wanted to talk about is there is a TSA certification, and that is to actually go onto an airport and pick up an aircraft part or engine or, or whatever to transport that stuff. And it's something um, I've looked into, but I really haven't uh, put a lot of, effort into doing it. Um, so I know it takes like two, three or four months to get it. Um, like I said, I haven't looked into it to a whole lot because there's not a huge amount of loads. Um, but 
I don't know, I might look into getting it. So like I said, I don't know a whole lot about that. But that's kind of a sixth thing you might want to look into that it just puts you up a little bit higher level there where you could grab up those loads too. So, and that's the, uh, like I said, TSA certification. Um, you can Google TSA certification for truck drivers uh, to get on airports or whatever, something of that nature, and you can find those types of things. So, uh, so that's pretty much it on everything. So like I said, there's five things there that can uh, make you more flexible i mean as far as stuff that you can do or open up more opportunities for you and uh, i know when i was in the navy as you guys know i was in the navy for almost 10 years in the cvs as heavy uh, construction mechanic um when i came in at an early i went in when i was 18 18 and a half and um you know kind of my some of my mentors kind of pushed me to like get every qualification that you can you know even if it might seem irrelevant right now um, anything that's offered to you, anything that you can get that can improve you, go ahead and get it, you know, um, because you don't, you never know when that stuff's, when it's like, oh, I, you know, I never thought I'd use this, but now it, yeah, I just made $5,000 because, you know, I got this 10, you know, five, $10,000 load, you know, when I couldn't find nothing else because I got this thing that I didn't think I would ever use. And uh, like I said, I learned that in the Navy. I mean, I came in the Navy as an E1 and in four and a half years, I was an E6, you know, because of everything that uh, I, I went after everything that I could get and it always made me on my evals and all that maybe that made me look that much better and um, you know kind of I was able to do work in some areas that were out of my expertise or out of my job specialty and 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 help me get promoted and all that and help me get into other things um, so it's always good to, to kind of go after you know always try to improve yourself and go after something and a lot of guys are like, I'm not getting hazmat I'm dealing, dealing with hazmat and all that and that's fine but um, if you're in the owner operator gig, or whatever, you're just you're just costing yourself money. I mean, like I said, about 50% of the loads that I do are hazmat. I don't really have any issues with it. Just I mean, make sure your placard's on, make sure your paperwork's right, and don't do anything stupid. And and um, you know, don't go any places you're not supposed to go. So um, and it's not it's not that bad. So uh, and I, I a lot of the loads pay really well. So um, and like I said, uh, the TWIC. Uh, passport and all that. Um, like I said, go out if you guys are able. The one other thing I want to say about Canada. Um, before I forget about it, I should have talked about this when I was talking about the passport. Um, if you've had, a, again, if you've had a colorful criminal history, um, I mean, even talking like DUIs and stuff like that, and I think even some like higher class of uh, misdemeanors, um, you may have a hard time getting into Canada. So if you do have your passport and you've had one of these colorful items on your uh, uh, criminal report or whatever in your past, even as a juvenile, um, before you book that load to Canada or whatever, I would call like wherever you think you're going to cross the border at, kind of look at it and you can get on Google or whatever, Google Maps, and um, or even you can search it or whatever. But most, if you get on Google Maps, you can click on the Canadian border services at the border and they'll have a phone number and you can call them up and um, you can tell them, hey, I'm thinking I'm a truck driver, I'm booking this load. I mean, and ask them and you may be able to give them your passport number and all that. I know guys have done this. And um, they've been able to search it and say, yeah, you're going to have trouble coming in or no, you're not, or you'll be okay. So um, like I said, if you had those issues and you have your passport and you're thinking about doing a Canadian load, um, I would call like Canadian border services or whatever first and check and see, hey, there, is there going to be a problem before you book that load? Because you don't want to get to the border and not get let in. Then they got to repower that load because that could cost you money. So, or take a big chunk out of what you thought you were going to get. So, uh, so always, you know, kind of check that out if you've had those issues in the past. So it is what it is. Um, anyways, uh, I think that's pretty well all I wanted to talk about here. So um, like I said, if you're able to get these things, um, I don't see any reason not to go out and get them. I mean, it just makes you that much more, um, that much more you can do out here and, and make more money, more money per mile, more money per load, stuff like that. So, uh, so that's pretty well is what it is. So uh, anyways, I'll go ahead and uh, close with that. Um, like I said, thanks for watching. We appreciate all the new subscribers and views. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Um, give us a thumbs up on the video if you liked it. And uh, hit the bell for the updates if you're subscribed. And uh, you guys always know I'm doing stuff, uh, the Landstar stuff, owner-operator stuff, truck maintenance stuff. i got a couple things coming up on the truck here we'll probably have out next week. i got to do on the truck here after this trip. Um, you know, we got farms, uh, springs coming, snows melting, getting warm. So I we'll have some more uh, farm stuff coming out, tractor stuff. Got some uh, more equipment maintenance to do. So, so always be, uh, like I said, uh, if you hit that bell and you get the updates and, um, and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.